What's happening guys? Today I have a 1996 Chevy K2500 4x4 that needs a front hub and bearing. It's grinding, it's loose, and it's just a needed replacement before the plowing season begins here. Now this video was actually shot back in May of this year and it's now November and we're just getting to editing and putting it out. I know it's bad, right? The weird thing about this truck though is that the hub and bearing is in the front of the rotor. So the hub and bearing's here and the rotor's here on the back side. Normally, you have your hub and bearing and then your rotor just kind of slides over the studs on there and then you bolt your brakes up and you go in a merry little way. This one is just the opposite. Now that they're trying to get the rotor further inboard so they can have better braking or what the reason for uh, doing this design, but it's a really weird design and in order to take your brakes off, your rotor off to do brake jobs or anything, you gotta pull the whole hub and bearing off, the knuckle off, everything, because everything just rusted together, and the studs for the wheels actually go through both of them and hold them together. While it's uh, it's hard to explain, you'll see it in the video. It's a really weird design. I've never seen anything like this before, so enjoy. Hopefully this helps. Now the first thing you need to do is jack up the side you're working on, and you wanna jack it on a solid frame point, and then lay it down, on a jack stand like so onto the frame. So we're about to let it down onto there. We have it jacked up on the plow mount up here, but usually you would jack it on uh, the frame over here. Something solid like that where it can handle all the weight. Uh, once you get the tire off of there, you can set it down onto the jack stand so it's safe for working. Now if you don't have an impact tool uh, to get your lug nuts off of here, what you wanna do is break torque on them before you ever take the wheel off the ground. Just loosen them, brake torque, and then once the vehicle's jacked up, we can actually just spin them off very easily. Me, I have an impact, so we're just gonna do it that way. Now that's off the ground. Okay, so here we go. Now on this particular vehicle, it's 1360, and just size it up on there. Now your wheel itself might be stuck on there, so what you can do is just hit it back and forth or top and bottom until it breaks free. Alternatively, you can hit it from the back side with your feet or uh, a plastic like mallet, like a deblo, that has about five pounds of weight to it. This one, obviously, is coming right off, so that's nice. Now for me, uh, doing this kind of stuff, this is all backwards compared to the Fords. What you have to do on these to do brake work or anything else is pull off the hub and bearing. You see it's in the front side here instead of the rotor hat being right on here. So that's a little backwards. Uh, so I hope you're not doing brakes on one of these, but we're, today we're just changing the hub and bearing and uh, taking the whole front end apart anyways. But uh, once you have the wheel off of here, you wanna go after anything you're gonna take off, any kind of nuts, or uh, bolts back in here and start spraying them with, with rust penetrant and get them soaking. And then we'll brush them off, we'll spray them again, and then we'll attempt to start taking pieces off of here. Now the product I like to use is the Mopar rust penetrant. It's really, really good stuff. The other option is PB Blaster, and then there's a couple other brands out there that are even more expensive than that, but this one is my go-to uh, for everyday rust penetrant. Like I said, to spray the exposed threads, and if they're really rusty, clean them off, because if you don't, when you take this nut off of here, it's just going to cross-thread the whole axle you just took it off of uh, when the problem wasn't there before. So let's go through, spray everything that you're going to be taking apart for this job, and get it soaked. Now in order to break torque on this, you'll notice that we're trying to break torque on it, it's a couple hundred foot pounds, and it just keeps on spinning like it should. What you can do is have someone put their foot in the brake and that'll clamp down, the caliper will clamp down and hold it for you. Or if you're all alone, you can take a flathead screwdriver like this that's uh, bulky and you know beefy, put it in the fins of the rotor, and then it goes to right there, you see, and it'll hold it for you. Then you can proceed with breaking torque on there. And it'll look something like this. A nice cheater bar on here. And you can start loosening it. All right, the next thing we're gonna be taking off is the brake caliper, get that hung and out of the way. So we're gonna turn the wheel to the right. 
We have full access to the caliper bolts. All right, for the caliper, it takes uh, three eighths inverted hex on there like this. You can see it. See, so put it in the back back there, and we'll get the slide pins out of here. Okay, the caliper slide pins are loose. Uh, they're kind of caged in there, so they're not going to come out all the way, but they're definitely loose from the knuckle here. What you need to do now is flip the caliper up and away, and it's a good idea to compress the piston in here just a little bit so it's a little bit loose to get past the rust ridge on here. So you just take a regular C clamp, something like this. Get it out far enough and you just compress it just enough and it'll help tremendously with separating all of this. It'll be all loose then. Now if you have a wood clamp at home, that's what I usually use when I'm at home at the shop. And that is even faster. You just want to go in just a little bit and it'll be loose. Get this thing off of here. You see how loose it is already? It's ready to fall off, literally. And that's a little trick for getting these off. And then you just wobble them off of here at that point. Make sure your bolts are fully out. And you can kind of wiggle it off of there. Put it up top here. Do not let the caliper hang. It's never a good idea. So on this side over here, there's a tie rod and nut. You want to take that off of there. We're going to knock that through. That's the last component that's holding us from spinning side to side on here. So we'll turn this back like this. Okay. So we've accessed the tie rod in. You can see it right there now. And start getting that off of there. And the nut on here is an 18 millimeter. Okay, now there's a few different ways of taking apart, the, separating the tie rod end from the knuckle. You can either wrap on the side here and it should come loose, or you can tap, put this bolt back on here, the nut, and tap it right on through. If you use a pickle fork or something like that, it's gonna split the boot. Now on ours, it doesn't matter because we're changing the outer tie rod end, but on yours, you may not be. So I'm gonna show you the two different methods and we'll see what works best here. Usually tapping the side, it, it comes right out, depending on how rusty it is. Okay, so if, if you do the nut method, what you wanna do is make sure it's just about flush so we're not uh, caving in the nut and ruining that also. And then you do some good taps through and you'll notice it comes loose then. All right, next thing we're gonna do is take this bracket off that supports the brake hose here. It's a 13 mil. Hopefully yours does not break. Oh, this one didn't. It's kind of hard to get to it, rust pad trend. Now the whole caliper is loose and the hose. At this point you want to either put it over here like on a milk crate and support it or hang it from the frame somewhere so it's not hanging on the hose itself. And we'll get that out of the way so it doesn't fall when we're trying to take this off. Alright, follow your, your ABS cable up and we're going to disconnect it. There's another clip up here on top of the frame here with this boxed in for the control arm you'll see it just follow it and then you keep following it over to here and you'll see it it's, um, it's where it ties in to the main harness so we'll get that off of there so it's free so when we start dropping the whole knuckle assembly out of here it's not attached all right, on the bottom side here for the lower ball joint, it's going to be really rusty from being exposed all the time. And your cotter pin that goes through here will most likely be disintegrated or you won't be able to get tapped through there. So just clip the ends of it so it's flush so you can fit a socket on here like so. You can still fit it all the way on there. And either use force and a breaker bar or a half inch impact and it'll actually slice that cotter pin right off of there still. So it's not the end of the world if you cannot get the cotter pin out of there and most of the time it still doesn't ruin the threads or anything like that this one's definitely coming right off so that's nice okay so when we're actually separating uh, the knuckle from the control arms it's gonna pop and it's gonna drop so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nut back onto here a couple threads okay 
and that way when it does drop, it doesn't drop on our toes. A couple threads like that, nice and loose, and it'll come right off later on once this whole knuckle falls down. All right, now same thing on this side. We're just gonna tap on the side of the knuckle. It's gonna loosen, it's gonna vibrate a little bit, and we should be able to either hit up on the arm itself or just tap it and it'll come up and out of there. We're gonna separate the top part first and the lower part second once we have access. So let's see if we can do this here. Safety glasses. There we go. Okay, same thing. Make sure that nut is still on the lower ball joint, like so you can see it on there. And we're just gonna tap the side of it here. Uh, it should go down eventually here. You can see right there with some hammering, it's starting to come out and separate. You see how low it is? Uh, it's just gonna take a little bit of time, but it's already basically loose from the uh, tapered joint on the ball joint there already. So that nut's gonna hold it for us so it doesn't fall on us. All right, it's definitely loose. The nut's still holding the whole thing up. So pick it up and be ready. It's gonna have a lot of weight to it. Something like that. It's a little tricky separating from the CV and the lower at the same time. Just a little wiggling and this whole thing will come out. And that right there is the way to uh, definitely get to these back bolts on here for the hub. You can see it here, it's ultra windy out. No, uh, we got all the bolts out of here. These tend to stick in here pretty good. The threads and the bolt themselves are not bad, but the head is what gets seized uh, to the knuckle here, right here. So we had cleaned it out really good, rust penetrant, all that, uh, but it just didn't work. The heads are rounding off because there's so much gone. Uh, from the heads already from the years is the plow truck so what we had to do is of course use an extractor set obviously uh, but even that they would just basically round off this is how the bolt looks on there it has the very small heads on there 15 millimeter um, so you have to have the special bolts from GM to fit in the recess now over here no big deal no big deal but over here in here it's way down in there so you have to have the special bolts especially for this side right here what we ended up doing was uh, grabbing a kit like this where we use uh, map gas obviously the hotter gas but we also introduced oxygen so it's kind of like an oxyacetylene uh, setup where the oxygen helps it burn hotter but we're just using map gas instead and you use this little setup right here that mixes the two up there you have a very fine tip to get in there once we did that and we use the uh, extractor, as you can see on here. Even a cheapy set like this, gripped them, and they came right out of there. So something to keep in mind, you're most likely going to run into this unless you live in the, the lower uh, uh, states, you know, the southwest, stuff like that, where they don't use salt on the roads. Now here is the bearing unit itself. It's really weird because the, the hub face here on the other side, you can see it's a hub face. Uh, it does not have studs going through it for the wheels. Um, they actually stay, they tap into the back side of the rotor and then they go through here. So it's kind of weird compared to the Fords that I'm used to. But besides that, the rest of this is the same. Four bolts and it bolts to the knuckle on there. So we're lucky that the bolts on here are nice and strong, even in the rust belt here. And they, they should not snap on you. They should just come out with some heat and I do get them out of there. The problem is the bolts are quite expensive uh, when you're putting them back in, but you do need at least two of the special bolts. Also, another note, a lot of these they'll try to sell you not indicating if it has ABS or not. So you gotta make sure if you have ABS that it has this wire, you know, the ABS sensor and wire attached to it in the box before you leave the parts store. And then we'll simply take these bolts out of here. Now the best way that I found to get these uh, big hub and bearings separated from the knuckles, even on the Super Duties and the Fords, is that they have studs sticking through theirs. 
I put the nut back on theirs and I tap on the stud so it's a direct transmission of power and force that way. This way, putting the bolts back in a couple of threads, we're changing the bolts anyways, we're changing the hub and bearing anyways, and we're gonna strike these points and drive it out of there. Something like this. It's gonna take a little bit. starting to come apart already. So make sure you do it evenly. There shouldn't really be a problem on here. And once it's so loose like that, you get both those bolts back out of there, you can kind of wiggle it out of here pretty much. We're in the center. Free. All right, now hopefully you can see this. What you want to pay attention to is where the ABS sensor is coming out right here at the top of the knuckle. Okay, that's where it's always going to be. And it has a, a special recess here for that wiring. So make sure you line the shield going back on with the wiring. Now what you'll notice on the knuckle after it's separated from the hub and bearing is there's a grease seal on here on the outer edge there. And there's also one on here. The one on here though is mainly for um, keeping all kinds of dirt and water out of here so there's no corrosion where it sits in here. So it's up to you if you want to change it out or not. It's always a good idea to change that out and that just kind of pounds out of there, pounds back in. Okay, before putting the new bearing back in here you want to clean the hub face on here including the edge here, the chamfered edge. Make sure it's all free of corrosion before going back in. You can use a, a, a cookie like this to clean it off, a cleaning wheel, or you know, sandpaper. Okay, so in order to separate the hub and bearing from the rotor, there's another step involved. We have to actually blow these studs all through here, and then it like turns a little bit, and then it'll actually separate from each other. So you're gonna have to use uh, a lug nut, your lug nut, put it onto there, you know, four or five threads, so that's fully on there, and then we're simply going to take a hammer, a three pound sledge, and we're going to knock it through there, so you're going to sacrifice one lug nut, but we're going to save all these studs though. Now alternately, if you are changing these all out, you can find them. Uh, just you can just simply hammer them right on through on there, but it'll look something like this. I got it on there, a couple threads, and we'll just knock it through like so. And then the back side here, you'll see it moving around. It's loose because all these are press-ins. We're gonna hold it with the vice grips. It nice and tight on there and then come back on this side with your socket like so it'll come off and you can see that the threads on here are undamaged and we can clean this up and reuse them okay so with all the studs out of there we're ready to separate the hub and bearing from the rotor here you can see Right over here, you can see that hole right there. The little cut out there to notch out. That's where these ears are going to spin to once it comes loose. And it'll drop right through there. First thing you need to do is actually break it free though. So you're going to support the rotor. Flip it over like this, just like this. You're going to support the 2x4s, 4x4s, 6x6s in this case. And we're going to drive it home right here and it should fall right through. Okay, here we go. A little block of wood? No. Okay then. Unlike the Fords, no matter how rusty these are, they separate. And you see I just turn a little bit like that, and it'll basically fall right through here. I mean there's some rust to deal with, stuff like that, but that's the idea behind it. Let's knock this side through. There we go. Comes right through. Alright, there it is. All that worked just to get a, a bearing out of here. 
which usually would just pull the rotor off, unbolt it, and it falls right off on the forwards except for some pounding. So it's a different design, but it's interesting. Now going back together, we're reusing this rotor. It's always a good idea to change them out, but if you are reusing it like I am, uh, what we're gonna do is clean the face right here and even on the back side here where it mounts up and make sure there's no stack up of rust tolerances on there. So if you sandpaper, angle grinder like this, Something like that, we'll just clean it up on here. And we're just getting the bulk of the rust off of here. It doesn't have to look pretty on there. All right, now when you're cleaning it, the front side is important. That's the side that goes and mates to the hub and the back side there. Uh, whereas back here, we're just clearing around where the bolts, the studs actually go through, make sure it's, there's no rust in there so it's just in there flush and it fully inserts in there. Spray some brake clean on there, clean it up, blow it out. Make a foot over to this side. We'll put a very light coat of anti-seize on here. And just kind of spread it around. You don't want to get it near the holes on here because you're just going to put it in the studs. And that's not good. So put a little bit on like that. And then you simply just move it around like this. So it's thin and even on there. Like that. Okay. Just like that. Now at the same time, Our knuckle we cleaned earlier, same thing. We're gonna put it on the face here, just a little bit. Don't get it down the holes. And we are going to, um, you know, just spread it around. Get a little on the, the chamfered edge right here. And that'll make it so it's easy to come apart later on. For brake jobs or whatever. Since you do have to take off the whole freaking thing for a brake job. Real light coating on there, and it'll it'll stick to it. That's why they call it stuff never leaves. It just sticks and ingrains itself like a really fine metal made into a paste. Looks good. All right, now putting this through can be tricky. Watch your ABS sensor, get all that through there first. And you can line it up on here. There we go. And just move it over, line them up. And we'll start pounding the studs through. We'll tap them through from the back side, and then we'll suck them through with our stud installer. And that'll line everything up for us. All right, so going back in, your new studs will be uh, really hard to get in there. So what you want to do is start them off with a hammer, or in our case, an air hammer, with a hammer head fitting on there. That'll get them tight in the bore. We come on the other side and use the actual stud installer and a lug nut, and it'll suck it through and kind of press it in there. Okay, now that it's seated, we'll put the stud installer on there. This is special because um, it has a bearing in the back side so it allows it to spin uh, instead of just binding up on there when you're pressing it in. Alternately, you can use a bunch of thick uh, flat washers on here, but it's going to bind up, but it, it'll work if you don't have the stud installer. Simply put it on, it's got a nice uh, cone shape in there to match the lug. And then you just ram it home. you'll know it, it'll definitely feel totally different when you've actually hit the stop in there you'll know and the back side flip it over you can check it afterwards but you'll know we 
You can check the back side, make sure it's nice and flush on there. All right, now before we forget, we need to put this uh, shield back on here, and this is how it goes. Kind of hooks under the ABS sensor there and lays flat, like so. There we go. And when you put the studs through the back side here, the bolts, and you bolt to the knuckle, it'll line everything up so it's not touching anything. And again, as you can see, clean up this so it all fits on there nice and flush also. At this point, it's time to mate the knuckle back to the hub and bearing here. Now the knuckle does go on here a certain way. First thing you want to do is put a little bit of grease on the outside head edge here. And that's where that seal that's in the knuckle is going to mate up to it. So we're going to grease it on here instead. Okay. And the top part of the knuckle goes right here where the ABS sensor comes out. So you just match it up on there. Something like this. Kind of line your holes up before it goes down. Just like so. Here's the top of the knuckle right here, and we're matched up with our ABS sensor. At this point, we're going to start bolting in all these bolts on here and torque them down before we ever put it onto the vehicle. So it just goes as a unit then. Now these bolts, they come from the you know GM or whatever uh, with a bunch of oil on so they don't rust up in the bag during storage. You want to take that off of there before we uh, put the Loctite on there. So you have nice dry studs and it'll actually work on there. Now the stuff to use on here is the blue Loctite. It's more than enough. It has enough strength to it. Let's put it on toward the bottom of the threads like that right there. Put a generous amount on there. This is suspension components. You want to use the Loctite. And then you just simply start putting them through and lining everything up. And make sure you thread them by hand. Okay, so with all the bolts in here by hand, I can feel they're threaded in. Everything's aligned, even the shield. We're just going to snug it down, crisscross pattern, with uh, your ratchet or impact, and then we'll torque it down later. And the torque spec on these is 133 foot-pounds. Okay, you got grease on there. And it looks like we're ready to go. Make sure all the threads are clean on here. Stuff like that. Now once it's hung on here and that lower castellated nut is on there, it'll hold it, no problem, it'll handle the weight. What you want to do before uh, fully splining the CV and the upper end is go down here and tighten it with your open end, socket whatever, and kind of get snugged up on the lower ball joint nut there. And then you can spline these together, okay? And then you proceed to go back up in to here like this and line up the upper on here. Now it's really hard to push down. Uh, the old trick is to lift the lower arm up so the whole thing comes up with a jack or you can use a pry bar to bring it down. Either way, it just depends how difficult it is on there. As long as you can get the, the bolt through there, the stud through there and put your nut on there. Jack it up. Can we hold it? Oh, there you go. Now once you get a big bar on here, you push down, 
you can literally tighten the nut by hand, spin it up there, and then it's it's already snugging at that point, and it's gonna hold. And you can visually look at it down here and go, yeah, it's it's holding or not. Now because it's tight in here, we're just gonna tighten it by hand right now with the open end, get it snug, stand through the bottom, keep snugging them up, and we can come back and torque them down and then do our cotters in there. And that's how it should look on there, nice and tight, everything's snug, top and bottom, all back together. See the lower down there? And we're gonna torque it, and then we'll start lining up the hole on there for the cotter pin. And you can see how the, should be able to see, you see the grease fitting right there? And that allows them access when they need to grease it during maintenance. All right, we're gonna torque the lower ball joint first and then the upper, now believe it or not, the lower ball joint calls for 84 foot-pounds, whereas the, the top ball joint here calls for 94 foot-pounds. So we'll torque those down now. Okay. And you can see right there how it's covering the hole in there. So we'll just tighten it. A little more. And you can see now the hole in the stud is at a window. And we can fit a cotter pin through there. We'll put the cotter pin through like so, and then you just grab it with your pliers, and you bend it out of the way. Now some guys like to bend each one of these ears out a different way. I like to keep them together so there's more integrity to the, the cotter pin. Kind of keep them together, make it a little stronger. So you simply take it, you bend it under. And they're going to move a little bit. Something like that. Okay, putting the caliper on is the next step here. I'll make sure that the, the rotor is clean from any greasy fingers, stuff like that. Best we can. Make sure the guides are clean here. All right, next step is putting the brake caliper back on. Make sure you lay your hose straight and you don't twist it. Get down through here. Start bolting it back on. We'll get these caliper slide pins screwed back in by hand on here. There we go really feel it that way. Alright, let's get our bracket in for the ABS wiring right here and then put our bracket on top of that for the brake hose. And there's a 13 millimeter bolt right here that goes in. We can just tighten that down. Alright, don't forget your bracket on here for the ABS when your ball joint bolts and you have to kind of customize this with this bracket right here everything's going to be different with the aftermarket what you want to make sure of though is when you go back and forth it has enough so make sure you give yourself some slack make sure you clip in your ABS wiring up here and using zip ties to bring it up the arm here in case the bracket's disintegrated, stuff like that is totally fine. Just make sure they're nice and snug so they don't get caught anything in the road. 
Okay, let's get the uh, axle nut back on it, hub nut. And don't forget that washer I was talking about earlier. Put that on there first. Make sure the threads on here are clean, which I already did. And let's make sure the nut threads are clean also. Spray it in a rag like that. Clean the outside. Stick your finger through with the brake clean on it, like so. Front and back. And you'll get all that oil out of there from earlier. Let's get some Loctite on here. And we're going to torque it down to 165, 165 foot pounds. Should thread right on there like that. Get it snugged up first. And then we'll torque it down. Now, the trick is same thing as taking it off press the brakes, have someone press the brakes, or put the uh, screwdriver in there. Something like that so it can hold it. Torque it down. Don't forget your screwdriver, get it out of there. At this point, it's a good idea to give it a spin. Make sure you don't hear no scraping or grinding noises from the, the backing plate on here because it can get bent during removal and installation. So ours sounds good. All right, one of the last things we have to put back on is the outer tie rod end here. It simply slips into uh, the knuckle right here. Just kind of pop it through like that. And I'll put our nut back on here, our castellated nut. And we'll uh, snug it down for now. Now the torque spec on here is 35 foot-pounds and the same thing applies once you have it torqued tighten it just a little bit until that window opens up in there and you can get your cotter pin in there so it's cotter pinned and it's taken care of and safe and secure. And this one actually lined up right away so that was nice. Same thing, fold it over like the other ones. And then hammer it over. All right, now once everything is back together on here, just go over everything you might have touched or taken apart on here. Just recheck it, torque it, uh, stuff like that. Make sure you've gone over everything. You don't want the front end kind of park one on the road. Uh, the last thing we have to do is obviously put the wheel back on. So let's line it up on there, pop it on there. Always start your lug nuts on here by hand. And the torque spec on these is 140 foot-pounds. Just crisscross them so it evenly torques when it's going back down. Now on this particular vehicle, it's extra tough to take just about anything apart on it because the vehicle's been used for plowing and salting its whole freaking life since 1996. So hopefully yours goes a lot smoother. I'll link down below to the parts I use. Just make sure they fit your vehicle in the uh, product catalog on Amazon there. Uh, but hopefully you don't need those long bolts that hold the hub and bearing in from Chevy because I think they're almost $20 a piece. But if they're damaged and you can't torque them down properly in the end, you might as well go and get them. Make sure you have your VIN and go get them to make sure that it's all put together, back together properly, or else there's no point in doing the job. We had to break down and buy, I think, two or three on this particular vehicle to get it done. So hopefully this helps. It's a really weird design, and I had to capture it on camera uh, because I'll probably never do something like this ever again.